Live at 5. This is SNN, the Suncoast News Network, your local news leader. Happy Wednesday, everybody. I am Eric Wilson. Don Brennan has the week off. Thank you for joining us here on the SNN Evening Edition. We begin tonight in Manatee County, where staff will soon be allowed to carry firearms at work. This decision comes following the approval of controversial policy changes by commissioners. It was first proposed by Commissioner James Satcher last year, who believes allowing employees to carry firearms in the workplace will improve safety in a live shooter emergency. County commissioners voted on the two initiatives during a public meeting on Tuesday. They also approved other efforts, such as commitment to a gap funding loan for the 920 Manatee Affordable Housing Project and created an investment oversight committee. A Sarasota man has been sentenced to life in prison for sexual battery of a child in 2021. Last Thursday, a jury found 48-year-old John Martin Smith guilty. Judge Thomas Kirk presided over the four-day trial. Detectives started an investigation after the seven-year-old girl came forward and said her stepfather abused her on his sailboat in Sarasota Bay in the summer of 2021. Now, during the investigation, detectives found an older stepdaughter of Smith's was also abused by him when she was 12. The now 9-year-old and 30-year-old victims both took the stand last week to testify against him. Sarasota Memorial Hospital Venice is doubling in size to keep up with the county's rapid growth. SNN's Brianna Boskert was at the topping point, topping out ceremony for the new tower this morning, and she has the story. Construction for a new tower at SMH Venice is well underway, which will add over 100 hospital beds. We built this hospital back in November, uh, a year, about a year and a half ago, and it filled up almost automatically. We knew it was going to be busy, didn't know quite how fast it was going to be busy. Staff gathered Wednesday morning to sign a beam that will complete the building's frame. I think it goes actually in the elevator shaft. <laughs> it's a, mostly a concrete building, so there's not a ton of uh, the, the steel, but we, we will carry on the tradition. Typically, a topping out ceremony would include hoisting the beam into place. April showers put a pause on that for now, but no amount of rain can slow down this hospital's ability to serve its community. They were the only campus in South County that stayed running through Hurricane Ian. Our hospital got inundated by patients that were coming up from Charlotte County, from other parts of South Sarasota, and ultimately needed a place to be and, and we were happy to be that place for them. But it definitely showed us our strains on the community, strains on health care and where we need to go for the future. The new five story tower will be essential in future storms and year round patient care. And this is just one step. We have a lot more uh, projects coming online to serve South County, uh, South Sarasota County, and um, we're just excited about continuing to grow. Once open, the tower will provide an additional 250 jobs. Reporting in Sarasota County, Brianna Boskert, SNN, the Suncoast News Network. Now, SMH plans to finish construction next April. Okay, let's check in with our chief meteorologist, Justin Mosley, who has your weather authority forecast. Justin, is that rain that we're getting, is that helping us with our drought situation? Well, Eric, uh, yeah, every little bit that we get definitely does help out, and we'll get an update on our drought monitor tomorrow. We get this every Thursday, but for now, as it stands, we have a severe drought ongoing here along the Sun Coast, and you can see it throughout the Tampa Bay area, throughout Central Florida, and the red in indicating an extreme drought in southwestern Florida. So we do need rainfall, and it looks like we do have more coming as we get through the day tomorrow. For now, our live Weather Authority Doppler radar, you can see the activity offshore. It is scattered in nature. The focus for the rain has been in South Florida for today. You can see all these green boxes, Broward, Miami-Dade counties, indicating flood warnings that are ongoing here. And we've seen a lot of pictures from South Florida here of the extreme amount of water that's fallen from the sky. We also had three tornado warnings earlier today and some of these cells right along the coastline. A1A, Federal Highway US-1 and out towards 95 and 441 dealing with the torrential rains and it's just training over the same areas, not moving very much. So a really rough go up it there in Broward and Miami-Dade. The bigger picture showing that we've got all this moisture in play, so our rain chances will remain elevated as we add in through the day tomorrow. Coverage at about 40%, but again, we're not complaining. We do need it. Scattered storms will be back in the mix 
for our Thursday. The next few hours not doing too bad. Southeasterly winds 10 15 miles per hour. Certainly breezy out there for this evening. We'll come back and update our seven day forecast. See what's going on as we head towards the weekend in just a few minutes. Oh. All right, thank you, Justin. Bringing kids to drag shows could soon become a felony in the state of Florida. Florida lawmakers advanced a bill Tuesday that punishes businesses that admit children to adult live performances. Now, this language by the bill defines adult performances as any presentation that depicts or simulates nudity, sexual conduct, or specified sexual activities. Penalties would include fines in the thousands of dollars, misdemeanors, and businesses being stripped of their licenses. The House version of the bill, HB 1423, has two more stops before getting a floor vote. The Community Foundation of Sarasota County announces grants for Hurricane Ian recovery efforts. To address the community's ongoing and long-term recovery from Hurricane Ian, they are launching the first in a series of competitive grant cycles specific to disaster recovery. Grant proposals focus on the following, and these will receive priority cases. Case management, children, youth services and education, home repair and housing needs, legal services, long-term recovery group and community organizations active in disaster support, mental and health behavioral health. Now to apply for a grant, you can visit cfsarasota.org. The initial grant cycle will close on April 28th. New data today from the Bureau of Labor Statistics shows inflation cooling to its lowest level in nearly two years. But with prices still high, the Federal Reserve may have to keep raising interest at least one more month, pushing the cost of borrowing money even higher. NBC's Alice Barr Breaks is in Washington to break down these numbers. Reassurance today that sky-high prices are headed in the right direction as inflation cooled to 5% year-over-year in March, down from 6% in February. It's the ninth straight month of easing price growth on an annual basis since a 9% peak in June. July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, now March, have been lower. Grocery prices ticked down a third of a percent from the previous month, with bigger drops in items like eggs that had soared to record highs. President Biden saying, quote, this progress means more breathing room for hardworking Americans. Jobs are going up. Wages are going up and inflation is coming down. But prices are still way too high, with housing costs continuing to wear on Americans. A new CNBC Momentum survey finds that 70% of those polled are stressed about their personal finances. The biggest factors include inflation, economic instability, interest rates rising, and a lack of savings. More than half said they had no emergency savings. The latest inflation data indicates the Federal Reserve's aggressive interest rate hikes appear to be working to slow the economy, leaving investors hopeful those rate increases may soon be done. Though with inflation still well above the Fed's 2% target, analysts expect at least one more small hike next month, meaning an even higher cost of borrowing for consumers waiting for signs of hope in the economy to bring real-world relief. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. A part of the reason prices remain stubbornly high is a hot jobs market. People with jobs can keep spending. The unfortunate trade-off is that the Federal Reserve wants to see the unemployment rate rise before it stops hiking interest rates. Broadway shows here on the Sun Coast and nationwide could be going dark. The Actor Equities Association was out last night before the musical Mean Girls premiered at the Van Wezel in Sarasota. The union is representing 51,000 professional actors and stage managers, including all of the performers in Mean Girls. Actors and stage managers on the road uh, for touring companies who travel all across the country, including Mean Girls, are currently in negotiations for their contract and we're trying to educate our audiences on what that means. Their main goal, of course, is to increase wages for their performers as well as their crew. All right, well, continuing with our Parkinson's Awareness Series, one gym treats every month, like April, as we know, which is Parkinson's Awareness Month. SNN's Sydney Rell has the details. 
Here at Jayco's Boxing and Fitness Gym, a class specifically for people with Parkinson's disease takes place three times a week, all year long. You can fight off the disease. It's not a death sentence. And the people that stick with this program, they feel better for days on end after working out here with us. And the program is geared to help fight symptoms uh, related to Parkinson's disease. For the past seven years, Jayco's has held boxing classes for people with Parkinson's every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I just want to hit the bejesus out of the bags and, and fight Parkinson's back. They work on their balance, their walking gait, different punching routines, and more. The goal of each exercise is to help strengthen muscles that people with PD may need to use in their lives daily. You know, we do a lot of squats, for example, and the way they put it here is that you always want to make sure you have your own legs to get in, up and out of the, a chair, up and out of a toilet seat, and so squats help strengthen out your, your legs. So everything we do here is related to what's going to help us with our Parkinson's journey. Participant Carolina Murphy says her advice for anyone struggling with the disease is to get up and get involved in the community. But you can't stay home and sit on the, on the chair and hope it goes away. It's not going to go away, so get involved and be around people that are like-minded, that want to get better and want to fight this till the end. Jayco's has 100 members and about 20 of them have Parkinson's disease. Go kick Parkinson's in the butt, everybody. In Sarasota, I'm Sydney Rell, SNN, the Suncoast News Network. Thank you, Sydney. This was part two of our Parkinson's Awareness Series. Tune in every night at 5 and 5.30 for more. Coming up on the evening edition, Senator Tom, Tim Scott expected to announce the launch of a committee for a 2024 presidential bid. More when we return. <laughs>